Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, thank you for attending, or I guess idly passing through uh, or watching as you are um, making your way through the Future Zone. Um, welcome to our talk, Teaching Digital Skills Through Virtual Storytelling. My name is Cody Krutz. I am the founder of Blue Trot, which is a creative consultancy. Uh, I've been working at the intersections of content uh, and research for about 10 years. Um, I have a background in cognitive psychology, so I actually study brain science and the way that we interact with digital mediums. Uh, so today is going to be a mix of research uh, and actual uh, storytelling in the industry. Um, and what I'm most excited about the panel today and our discussion is focusing on how we can bridge the gap between high tech industry um, and young creators. So uh, we have a couple of awesome uh, speakers today. And what we're going to try to do is by the end of this panel, uh, we're going to try to see how we can really reduce that gap between those that are new to storytelling and uh, what types of digital skills do they need um, and how can we get them to a place of high tech industry uh, and actually creating, making money, and hopefully making um, beautiful careers out of these new technologies. Um, we're in the future zone right now. I think uh, for those of you that have passed through, it's pretty evident that uh, storytelling is changing a little bit. We, for a long time, have been used to um, a traditional frame in the way that we capture and consume stories. Uh, and that is changing in a pretty rapid way. Uh, we have virtual reality, we have augmented reality, we have mixed reality, we still have real reality. And so all of these things are merging together to provide new types of storytelling uh, opportunities. So, um, so today we're going to talk about some of those things and um, hopefully really answer the question, how can we get young creators um, the skills that they need to tell these new stories? Does that sound good? Does that sound fun? Yeah. yeah. OK. Um, so let's start with our awesome speakers. Can uh, both of you introduce yourselves yeah. and tell us uh, what you do and uh, where you do it? Yes. Hi, I'm Abby Tate. I um, work for the Technicolor Experience Center in Los Angeles, California. Um, my goal at our facility is really to help curate content and educate immersive media. So educate putting on a headset, an HMD, understanding the content that's being created, both good and bad not blowing you out with my mic, and um, really just trying to put out immersive media for the whole spectrum of the industries, not only entertainment, but for market adjacent such as architecture, education, um, real estate, and everything in between. So how, how can we create content um, for storytellers? How can we create content that's tangible that we've used in our everyday lives? If that's AR apps, if that's stories that you're telling within the headset, if that's mixed reality, so a little bit of both, and how we can lead um, the next you know, 18 to 24 months in this new medium. I think that it, it is so new that we can kind of fail and try and fail hard and figure out um, what works and what doesn't. Um, and it's a really exciting time, especially for education, right? You're, you're giving students a time for the, uh, an opportunity for the first time to step into someone else's shoes. So if it's a career, or if it's uh, traveling, or if it's you know diving or going to the moon, you're able to really open their minds in a way that you weren't ever able to before. So I think it's a beautiful thing. Um, we are showing another piece in the VR, the future zone as well. So definitely check it out. And um, I'll kind of pass the mic to you before I <laughs> keep talking forever. Thank you. The virtual mic. Yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, First of all, thank you very much for your uh, opening again. Thank you very much for welcoming me here. It's such a great to be, to be um, great privilege to be here. Um, my name is Mujde Singh. I'm founder of Kiskot. Kiskot is a social enterprise which aims to empower young uh, women and girls in underprivileged communities. Um, oh. Yeah, I think oh. you just have to digital turn up, turn a little bit to your <laughs> yeah. left. I think there's some yeah. feedback. No. no. Hey. <laughs> Maybe I should talk like that. <laughs> um, Let's try it again. Yeah. Through digital education. Is everything going to be a little bit? It's all. Oh, oh, there, there we go. you go. You're yeah. back. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, I think I should be awesome. here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a social enterprise which aims to empower 
young women in underprivileged communities um, through digital education technology. Um, I started this one when I was doing my uh, master's degree in, in London. And when I researched about how we can use as a social enterprise, how a right social enterprise reach out uh, these underprivileged communities and integrate them in the UK economy um, through digital education technology. And I, case, I got this as a case study for Turkish and Kurdish society in London. And it was uh, awarded as a year of social enterprise in 2016 by, by UK government. Uh, and now it's supported by them. And since then I'm uh, you know, collaborating with companies and the Turkish government uh, to reach out to those girls. And we are into, in, right now, um, in Eastern Turkey, we are reaching out 1,000 girls. And we are teaching, training the teachers. Yeah. And through the tra training teachers, they are teaching the, the girls how to use technology and how to code. So, so today is about uh, virtual storytelling and digital skills. And so I wanted to, to start off this talk by hearing from both of you about what types of digital stories are you both drawn to? Um, I think personal experiences are a great place to, to maybe begin. Um, a, a digital story could be anything. It could be a game or, or a movie. Or um, I would just like to hear from the both of you. Uh, what types of digital stories do each of you like to consume or um, on your day to day? What stories are you drawn to? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm really interested in immersive journalism um, as a storytelling mechanism of how you can tell a story through the eyes of um, a refugee or a coder or um, a professor and understand a life in their shoes or a day in a life in their shoes. Um, I think that storytelling is a great medium that you can use even with 360 right now. Um, for VR or for getting your voice out there um, that I'm really interested in. I think that you consume and um, have much more larger um, empathy reaction when you're watching uh, journalism through the eyes of um, the person that it's about. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I think that's an amazing place. I also think, um, like, the, for instance, the, the piece that we're demoing over there, Wavna, is about the first female shaman in the Amazon rainforest. And without VR and storytelling, we would never have been able to st tell her story. So that gave that, this community a voice um, for the first time to share their story and to share why the rainforest and their community was very important. Um, and that's just incredible to me that that is a place and time that we are right now where someone in the Amazon, a tribe that was almost completely wiped out, um, we now know that they exist and understand their um, story and their culture. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, to be honest with you, we are using so many different education technology, not only VR. Yeah. Uh, but we are also using VR to integrate our girls' uh, project uh, to tell their stories better to other people to understand. Um, and that's really helpful for, uh, especially technology itself, really powerful to uh, to to help the other communities to integrate into UK uh, and to, yeah, in the society, and we are uh, I'm quite into uh, uh, using um, yeah, coding and I, I start coding by myself when I was st studying in Eastern Turkey, uh, where we didn't have any um, library, <laughs> yeah. but uh, I was lucky that I was able to use. Uh, my uh, one of my family's members man, members uh, computer and I start coding by myself um, and and that's really helped me to to tell the story definitely it helps uh, telling the tell your story but also help right now our project girls who are attending and uh, creating their project how uh, they tell their true stories through technology uh, it's, it's quite powerful yeah Absolutely. And both of you have very different jobs uh, in terms of uh, what you do on the day-to-day. -day. Um, could you take us through what a, a normal day-to-day -day in each of your roles looks like? Uh, I, I, I would love to hear. Um, it, it, it doesn't have to be. Um, it depends on what I you do on the average day-to-day. No. -day. Yeah. yeah, but I but I would love to hear more about um, what, what each of you do kind of uh, uh, in your careers and in your positions. Yeah, so I'm <clears throat> with Technicolor and in Hollywood, I'm mostly working with the entertainment industry um, at the moment and really opening the doors to immersive media to traditional media. So from um, creators that are coming from filmmaking or from um, writing, script writing, you know, just traditional 2D flatties into VR and what 
how I can create those aha moments for them to understand that they understand VR and what is that aha moment. So a big part of my job is curating content for that specific person. So if it is a, a Hollywood director that's never been in and wants to see a piece of content, I'll show them a narrative 360 piece. If it's um, an architect that's coming in that wants to see how to use these tool sets within his new job, I, I show him a training uh, called Quill or Tilt Brush where you're able to play around. And um, the best part of my job is creating that aha moment when you see that they get it and I'm able to share that experience with that person afterwards is an incredible piece of um, my job. I think that people say VR is um, isolated and I think completely different. I think it's social because it's such a raw, intimate moment after you take a headset off and you're able to share that experience with a person, um, both good and bad, but I think that's really an incredible piece, part of my job. Um, so I do a lot of that. I also bring in big groups. Um, of, we're starting to bring in students, so working with um, high schools around Los Angeles and bringing groups of 10 to 15 students in for a couple hours just so that they understand that this medium is out there and what they can start getting the cycles in their mind to understand what they can be creating. Um, I think that giving some tool sets to uh, students and creators is great and then we can kind of connect those artists or students or directors with the technology that they need to then go on and create things. Um, it's a, it's a really interesting job and completely different than what you're doing. Well, you are doing amazing things. Yeah. I'm just really like, wow. We're both. I know. It's, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, to bounce off of you as well. Yeah. I'll come to Turkey. You come to Los Angeles. It's perfect. Um, well, uh, I'm also using something, as I, I told you, I'm using um, uh, education technology to make a little bit fun for girls how they can also, uh, not relying on them, by at least, you know, to understand how technology works and how they can also uh, create something and help the other societies. One of our girls, they cr she creates something very cool. Um, she creates a tool which is, uh, she has a, uh, she got uh, domestic violence, uh, unfortunately, and we found out her uh, through our mayor in Turkey. Um, and uh, she create her mother uh, has a cancer and, uh, the place that they are living is very difficult to go to hospital, and she creates a, a device to measure her blood pressure. Uh, and right now, she's uh, founded by uh, two companies, and they are just really seeking to get them internship, yeah. uh, and also Microsoft Turkey as well. Um, so this kind of things open the mind, uh, open the gates for girls, and I think giving the opportunity to them is just really amazing that they are, you know. Once they uh, get the brave and when they realize that they are also able to create something else, they were like, well, I am coding. Yes, I know how to code. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, they are, they are really pretty cool. Yeah, that's always one of the most powerful things to see a young creator realize that they have agency over things that they could create. And I think one of the super exciting things about uh, virtual building and building virtual worlds is the fact that you get to construct all of these things, you get to kind of populate these apps and worlds with um, with whatever you want, and that's a super exciting thing, I think, for a young creator to always realize. And Abby, you mentioned that sometimes there's this aha moment with um, some of the people uh, that you bring through or students that you work with. Let's talk about that moment a little bit more, because I think especially with uh, immersive technologies, that that's um, an important one, especially for those that are perhaps new to it, who have never been through it before. Um, so could both of you give me an example of uh, someone that you've had maybe recently go through an aha moment with both of your um, technologies and, and through uh, your, your, your jobs? Yeah, um, I'm gonna have you start with no. that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, um, an aha moment. Um, I think that showing, um, so we had a, a dive teacher come in and um, he was talking about how he wanted to share kind of his story of being able to have that aha moment with first time divers and bringing them to that. Divers. Yeah, scuba okay, divers, yeah. sorry. Yeah, scuba divers. Um, and being able to share the, those moments of going underwater and maybe it was a piece you worked on. Yeah. But showing that you could, um, he could share what he, his job has been his entire life with his parents that have never wanted to go underwater and have that phobia 
and being able to find a medium where he can show what he does for his living and what he loves and is so passionate with his parents that would never go underwater. Um, I think that's an incredible moment in time when he found this kind of bridging the gap of what he's described his entire life to his parents and they've said this, you know, and been like, that's great, but I'm so scared of the water. I'll never go in. I'll never go in. Sharks. And to be able to put that headset on and, yeah, sharks, and understand that it's this completely different world and to really feel embodied um, as your son in their position, I think is an incredible <coughs> moment. I'm, I'm hot, but I'm also giving myself goosebumps. It's, it's just a really cool um, mechanism to for embodiment and um, storytelling within that moment. Yeah, that's a great one. Well, I just remember something that, um, you know, the, the, the places that I'm working, they usually not to allow to study uh, and also to go to school. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them, they are deprived of education. And um, we are trying to get the fathers and the, men, the, the member of men in the family that they can also come in to join our workshops. Uh, and one of our girls, she, she came twice, and then the third time she didn't come, and the fourth time she didn't come. And then uh, I went to meet up her family, and they were like, well, we don't know what she's doing. And what does it mean, like, empowering? We don't understand why technology that she needs to learn. Um, and <laughs> we invite him to the workshops um, that, uh, with her. <laughs> Take with your daughter and come to and visit us. And when he came in, and then we are also, we were doing something, virtual reality glasses and things. And he amazed, he was like, wow, something going on here. Okay, <laughs> I understood why, because he was scared that she, her daughter, his daughter, uh, start questioning a lot. So she asked questions and questions, and she, he was like, she changed a lot, and we, did, we don't want her to change. And I was like, well, that's the process. Um, and, <laughs> and now he, he wants to be mentor of our workshop. So <laughs> that's uh, how uh, the challenging, and we can get through the challenging to make it opportunity uh, for, 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 the, for, for the workshop to sustain, uh, sustain the girls' uh, participation. So the whole family had a, yes. an aha moment, it seems. Yeah, yeah we expect. Which is what, yeah, what's yeah. what you hope for with students, <laughs> yeah, to so get their families on board. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, especially the immersive technology, sometimes there's a, uh, a little bit of hesitancy from either parents or we see it with educators, with teachers a lot, is that yeah. especially if you can't always see what um, the student or child is seeing on the screen, then that's always a scary thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, but I think that as soon as they've also kind of had a, a collective experience that no, we see that go away a bit. Um, that's great. So let's talk about after that moment. So you know, say a family or a student or a young creator has had this aha moment of wow, look at this is something that uh, that is really exciting and possibly a platform that I want to create for. What are the next steps for them in terms of the skills that they would need to learn to start to build and create things? Are there either hard skills if it comes down to a specific language or program or technology, or are there other soft skills that you think are both relevant for getting started once a student kind of has that, um, that drive and that kind of catalyst? Um, what are the next steps for them to start to, to build stuff? Yeah, that's, <clears throat> that's difficult in VR right now because it is such an, um, an, a new industry, right? So there isn't a, like, for film, right, you know that you need a camera and then you shoot and then you have an editing software. And for VR, you, you can do 360 where you can shoot and need to stitch and create something. Or you want to do in game engines, so you need to use Unity or Unreal, a different platform. Um, what's, what I really like is um, Unreal has like the free kits, right? But is it Unreal? I yeah, you so, can, yeah, you can so, install them for free. Yeah, I think they install, charge you if you yeah, want to start making yeah, money. Yeah, so they're starting to give you kind of um, options as a student or as someone that wants to be able to create um, some kind of free use cases of testing out the platform. Um, I think that the next kind of steps in that would be, um, I think group methodology right now is great. And going in with friends, if it's an after school program, or going with friends to maybe split costs on a VR computer is a good idea and do a group project. Um, I think it should be fun right now. So maybe it is starting with games, just a simple game that you can create with friends. Um, I think that 360 is wonderful still. I mean, you can get, now with iPhone 10s, you can create videos, or uh, 360 cameras are you know, very inexpensive, and there's some that stitch themselves, so you can create these 3D worlds with, with you at all times, um, and then share those with the magic windows. I think AR kit is really neat. Um, 
it's very easy to use. Um, like the IKEA app is really neat. If, I don't know if you've tried that, but for testing with AR, you can lay furniture where you want it, um, <coughs> share it with your family. So there's a lot of tools that are starting to pop up that's making it more accessible that you can start playing around. And once you have those basic skills, then you can kind of do that next generate or those next steps in creating content that you can then share. Yeah, so integrate. the interactive yeah, the interactive. Are the key to kind of getting started with yeah. some of those things. Yeah, I think so. Cool. And Muja, what would you say then also are some of the other skills for students to get started to build either apps or other types of experiences? Um, well, uh, I recently received lots of email from the, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, from from the other communities, uh, the girls especially, yeah. where, where shall we start? And we don't know how we are going to start it. Yeah. And I think the resources are not that enough, especially uh, the girls. Um, they are not that, yeah, they are using, uh, you know, internet, yes, every almost house, they have their own internet, but it is difficult for them to reach out the resources. I think it has to be very something uh, cheap and uh, a little bit cheaper than now because education technology, yes, they are doing an amazing work, but it's really expensive and for the other girls and uh, especially in, uh, you know, um, deprived uh, uh, societies, they found it very difficult to reach out. Yeah. Um, so that's why we found it very, very difficult to, that's quite challenging for, uh, for us as well. Um, to reach out these resources, um, uh, and also um, I, I think this is the the uh, the cheap, uh, well the, the reasonable price. Is, it will be great for the educational tools. Uh, that's what I will say. And are there uh, is there equipment that you provide at your workshops in terms of like the actual computing infrastructure? Do you do you guys provide that at some of your workshops, or is that yeah. ever a problem? Yeah, we are, well, we, I'm, uh, once I figure out that we are uh, coming across those of uh, girls who are facing domestic violence, mm -hmm. we, uh, we start collaborating with universities' pedagogical approach. And for example, Westminster University and Koch University in Turkey, they are helping out for the uh, pedagogical approach and also measurement the, the workshops what we are doing. And, and each session we are trying different kind of uh, tools which uh, help the girls to understand to understand better uh, tech to uh, better understand technology. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we are using different, uh, and also it's important that the girls has to know that it's not about um, learning or being coder. It's important that how they will be understand and how they integrate technology into their future uh, for their future. It's, it's uh, that's how they, they would understand that they can integrate technology with so many different kind of uh, skills and jobs. Yeah. And are there um, some la like programming languages or things that are more popular than others in terms of like getting started? I yeah. like, do find that some things are more successful than others. Like what's a good example well, I of that? Think Python is very straightforward, uh, mm -hmm. especially uh, for the new starters yeah. uh, and creating the project. Uh, we found it quite straightforward. Yeah. Yeah, Python's great. And Python was the first language I learned when yeah. I started building and coding. Yeah, for like yeah. 3D worlds, we had an old engine that sat on top of it and like yeah. rendered. And yeah, it took yeah. a long time to like move an object. Yeah. But it's super exciting, right? Because you're controlling and you're using, you're using scripting to build a 3D virtual environment. And I think that is also very exciting when thinking about um, 3D space and yeah. just um, how to build stuff. It's, it's pretty great. Yeah, and also collaboration, I think it's, uh, it's, it's very crucial. So we are also making kind of brainstorm mm -hmm. when they create their own project. Before the project is uh, done, they, they make brainstorm and they learn how to collaborate. And that's really important skill to gain for girls. Yeah, that, that yeah. group methodology I think is very important. Yeah. It's just, you, you, and you can always have someone like an elder or someone that's very knowledgeable, then someone second down and second down, and then you're always learning from each other, and that can really excel creation or coding or, you know, whatever platform. I think that's really important. Um, we, we do an artist in residence program at our facility, which is kind of, it, allow, it opens the doors for artists that, um, you know, may be coming from a 2D or a different, completely different industry um, and had no idea that the technology existed that, from the ideas that they've had. And it's a really cool moment when they come in, they're like, well, I want to do photogrammetry and I want to try these things and this exists. And that's amazing for us to then be able, as a larger company, to give them resources 
to then make the, their dreams that reality and use the resources with, with under the Technicolor umbrella and to create um, those projects. Then we can share at, here at places like this or yeah. Davos or Sundance. It's a, it's a really cool project and platform. Um, and it's it, we learn a lot from the artists as well. And I'm sure you learn so much from your yeah. students. It's, you know, it's a symbiotic relationship, and I think that is just continuous education um, with opening those doors and working with students and artists. Um, you can always learn more and create different things that you would not normally, or it's not mainstream gaming or stories. Yeah. I think those individuals have such incredible stories that you would never hear right, yeah. unless you had the time to give them that platform to speak. Is Technicolor considering a young artist program? Yes. Has that ever been in oh, the talks? Sure. Yeah. That would be yeah. Super yeah. Successful, I think, I I think that's very important. Um, yeah, we we're just getting started, so I, I would love to do that. I would love to do something like that. And I cool. think an after school program, you know, when you're doing a mentorship, and maybe it's not only Technicolor, maybe it's Facebook, or maybe it's Oculus or Google that starts to start doing these after school programs where us as industry leaders are opening our minds and not just giving funding, but really giving resources and, um, and what's the other word? Resources and um, educate, like educating them in the industry and telling the students what to do, you know, not just handing a headset over and being like, hey, go create. Yeah. Like they need to understand and have that mentorship. And I think that's something that is easy. We can all do that and spend a little extra time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's, I think, it, something uh, we see in the research, too, is that there's a lot of talk around uh, the, what's called the new digital divide, which yeah, is that yeah. at this point, uh, it's not as much of a problem that, uh, that different communities have different accesses to the internet. It's that a lot of us now throughout the world do have access to the internet, and the question is, um, how is that time and access used? And so yeah. uh, what we're starting to see in the research is that um, it's not that uh, it's not always that communities have different access. It's that they use their time differently, and that uh, communities from lower SES populations typically tend to use it more for chatting or for um, social or gaming. Um, whereas uh, communities of students from higher SES populations tend to use it more for like knowledge finding and for um, you know fact-based stuff. And uh, and so it's really about how those opportunities are, um, are, are kind of marketed. And so um, what I want to know from each of you is, is what, in terms of the digital skills that we're talking about, so learning and how to kind of create and construct things so that they can be um, successful creators, uh, how are both of your organizations working at um, making those skills accessible um, to, to ensure that students from all different types of communities um, then get access to them? Yeah, I think podcasts are an incredible resource that's nice. utilized, but probably still underutilized. Um, I'm still discovering podcasts that I'm learning so much about, not only VR, but um, different scientists, and, like just everything. So I think podcasts are an incredible resource. Um, Voices of VR podcast is a great podcast. Um, VR Scout is a great platform where it's just it's a new source that is kind of scrambling everything that you would need to look for on the internet and putting it in one place. Um, podcast for me is I'm a very hands-on learner, so be able able to listen to it. I think it stays with me longer. Um, and then you're allowed, you're getting interviews with people that you would, didn't know existed, and who, who might lead you into an industry that you didn't know was there. I think that's they're such an easy, great resource. Yeah, but actually, as an educator, <laughs> educator, I'm, we are using social media a lot, and yeah. uh, especially in Turkey where. Um, there is no enough education tools, and uh, we are also using uh, Blogger as well to uh, to teach the other teacher how they can utilize and how to approach the other girls in the in the societies and especially in the school. Um, that that's where. And I would love to just add uh, the previous one. What uh, you ask us? Um, I think curiosity to give them space to to curious about it. It's it's just really important for girls, especially yeah. when they are learning. Because I was deprived of education for long time and giving the opportunity for me if I if they wouldn't get this opportunity I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't create Kiskot and I think curiosity is, is very important because I have a twin brother and he <laughs> I, I was so curious about using and looking and playing his, his tools and playing his um, his toys uh, and my family I was well 
I'm warning you, don't don't play his uh, his toys. That's his toys. Yeah. You need to have baby. I was like, no, I'm you know I'm not gonna play with the ba babies uh, and dolls. <laughs> um, and I think uh, that's to give them opportunity to, to discover themselves and how what is it, uh, important is for them to to give them curiosity and uh, teach them how to how to curious you know how to be curious about it. I think that's really important to 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 learn all the schools. Yeah, yeah, I work with uh, high schoolers a lot. And so yeah. we find actually um, with computer science, there's usually a stigma against um, being a computer scientist. Yeah. And that's something especially uh, with girls is, is seen in the research is um, thinking about, I, I don't want to try that because it doesn't match my identity or what I want to be, or there's some kind of stereotype against that. And, um, and what we find is that uh, when we remove that, so when we you know, stop calling it computer science, um, but we call it something like storytelling or we call it uh, right. something yeah. that's a little bit more creative, we find that that actually, uh, that reduces the stereotype a bit. And so we get a much more kind of um, diverse group of students that want to work on things yeah. when we kind of look at um, how can we just maybe market it to a wider variety um, of students. And so, yeah, that is one that, that we've seen kind of some success in, which is, yeah, yeah always exciting. Um, so, so my last question, I guess, before we open it up to the, the floor is, um, I think, Abby, on one of your bios, you, you, you made a really good comment that said, uh, you're only as creative as the, the people that you surround yourself with. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think, especially for us living in a place like Los Angeles, which is so networking and people-based, that it's really hard to, to get started in a new network. Um, if you want to be a young creator and you want to go into a creative field, um, I think that there's some big challenges with how to do that. Um, so what is the advice that you would give both of you to, to young creators that are starting to kind of go into these respective kind of creative or um, uh, kind of fields that, that require networking? You know, how, like yeah. what, what advice do you give for them getting started? Yeah, that's, that's tricky. I mean, I've been in Los Angeles for a little over two years now, and it's definitely a hard city, like you said. Um, and I think that I get my creative motivation um, and inspiration from social media, really, and finding different artists and then um, just kind of following their workflows and understanding that. And we're in this, like, Internet of Things now where everything is so readily available to the point where you don't know if it's real or not. But you can kind of follow that and um, go on that kind of hero's journey of understanding the pieces and, pieces and parts that it takes to make these different creators. Um, I think LinkedIn is a really strong yeah. platform, um, especially if you just want to understand how they got to where they are. Um, I've, I've used that as a resource um, a lot, which I'm finding it's more and more around the world of you know, what is your background to get to those places. Um, I think bios are great. Um, again, sorry, back to podcasts. I just, I'm learning so much recently listening to podcasts, but those are great. And then I think just meetups. Um, different meetups are really important to go out there. Um, it's hard to meet people, and I'm sure in mixers too, you know, you want to be quiet, but going up to, and just really understanding their methodology of creation. Um, I think meetups are important. I think it's up to us as industry leaders to host things like that, to host hackathons, and to host these workshops where you're putting different people in the same room for them to understand that this, this pipeline exists and that you can connect these dots. Um, we try to do that at the tech is host different events that are like two random things put together. So to connect those dots to then create those journeys. Um, and then I just get inspiration from all different platforms. So not only from VR, but from fashion and from psychology and from um, uh, news reporters. It's just, you know, kind of mixing that. And that's what's so great in our platform is you can kind of mix all of your passions into one thing now, which is really neat with the internet. So same with coding, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, well, actually, um, well, I want to tell about story what I how I create Cuscode. Uh, when I was uh, doing my master degree in London, I didn't know anyone. My networking was just really basic. Uh, I was so focused on academic studies, and and I just found amazing women, Alice Bonosio, through LinkedIn, just accidentally. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and she um, led me to so many women, amazing women, and I interacted with them, and I learned a lot from them. And I think um, asking people is one of the uh, most crucial things. Like, how can I do that? I don't know. And how can I reach the, the people in my industry? 
okay, ask and, yes. and find out the solution, yeah. definitely, and yeah. get the opportunity. And people, when people know your uh, you know, intention, they are there, they are helping you. And, and I think I, I was one of the lucky ones uh, who I met uh, Alice. I, I wouldn't do that uh, faster if I wouldn't know her. And, and I think networking people, uh, yeah, well, people just saying that uh, I'm good at networking. Well, maybe, I like talking, <laughs> that's for sure, although with my poor English. But still, I'm asking people, and how can I do that, get the mentorship, that's, that's one of the crucial things. Because uh, I'm pretty sure that many people, they are there to help you. Uh, and, and I think um, that's how I figure out to, to make this one in London and make very short time and get to uh, get awarded in England. Um, so yeah, asking people. <laughs> Is that a skill that you workshop with your students to kind of get them yeah. comfortable with oh, yeah, reaching out and, yeah, and we are finding not just, someone? Exactly. We are not just uh, teaching them how to code. Uh, we are giving them different kind of skills, networking, how you can tell story of about your uh, project. Uh, and, and that's why I'm collaborating with, with so many NGOs, universities, and different students who, PhD students, who would like to discover things in the main uh, places. Uh, so that's, that's quite important for the girls uh, who are participating in my workshops. And, uh, and they, are, uh, they are happy, happy with that, because uh, with short time, they are learning a lot, very intensively. <laughs> Do both of you have mentors? Do you guys have people that you turn to when you want to ask advice for, for something? Yeah, um, I think there's two. I, my father, first and foremost, he's a psychologist, so he understands the spectrum of human. <laughs> yeah, of humans. So he's a, he's a big resource. And then, um, yeah, I have some female um, mentors, um, especially my, my boss right now, Marcy Jastro. She's just a strong headed woman. And um, to your point, I think that there's recently in the last few years been a lot of. Um, uh, women mentorship groups online. So if there's Facebook groups or if there's, um, for a specific, if it's coding or there's a Women in VR Facebook page um, that I'm a part of that's just kind of everything under the sun within that skill set. So if, and it's not only limited to women, but I think that starts off as like a safe place where you can ask, you don't feel like you're gonna be judged and it can be a safe place to just ask questions and learn. Um, and I'm learning from a lot of other females as well, just knowing that they're all in that industry and just to be able to ask questions. Um, I think the web, the World Wide Web can be a very incredible resource um, when you find the right platform, which That's is right. incredible. Yeah, yeah. approach the right, the right person, you don't have enough time, just go for it. That's, that's what it is, I suppose. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, before we open it up to the floor, where can people in the audience find more information about both of your organizations? You guys have yeah. stuff to plug. So I'm a um, I'm booth over there, um, the Technicolor Experience Center. So you can, um, it's the TEC at technicolor.com. Um, we also have a project I'd love for all of you, the audience, to come check out. Um, it's a very inspiring piece, and you can kind of see the spectrum of what we're able to do now. Yeah. Um, I'm mostly focused on um, Muslim women and young girls. And um, if you want to reach out to me, any anything else, sponsoring, maybe, <laughs> or if you uh, would like to collaborate with me, I'm really open with that. Uh, so you can reach me on Esin uh, at kisco.org. Um, so that's my email, and I'm around. <laughs> awesome. Um, we'll open it up for questions. I think we have uh, some time if, if any of you would like to ask either our panelists or me questions about storytelling or digital skills. Do we have any? Anybody? Or not? Just keep talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we in the middle. Coming to you. Um, with the right digital skills. So, sorry, I couldn't. Whether, whether you find there are um, any particular skills, digital skills that are lacking in young people coming through um, their careers, whether you, you, you know, there are certain things that you wish they, they had that they may not be learning at the moment. Uh, well, actually, uh, we, are, we are not just, as, as I told, I'm, we are not just only teaching how to code. We are also let them to understand that you have different kind of skills that you can integrate technology into your skills. So that's how we are collaborating with companies to let the girls 
and young women to integrate in the economy and working in a, uh, in a main place, um, an, an active place uh, to be in the companies. I don't know. Really confidence could be one of those. Confidence. Yeah, yeah, confidence, one of those skills, yeah. Yeah. yeah, confidence. Yeah, confidence. Be curious. I think those kind of things is important for as a skill. Hi, uh, my name is Mesurla. I'm a, a student of media and communications. My question is to Abby Trade. Uh, sorry if I mispronounce it. No, it's good. Uh, you said that journalistic uh, way of uh, storytelling was your inspiration. Can you please explain it more? How did a journalistic way of uh, storytelling actually inspire you, inspired you to come and do such thing? Yeah, um, there's a piece called Six by Nine that The Guardian did um, that was kind of a second person, right? I guess it was second person. You didn't where, have an avatar, you yeah, have a body. Yeah, so it was about a uh, six by nine cell and what that was like to be in that um, space. And so you didn't have a body, but you were in exactly a six by nine cell. So they, they measured it out and created it around that. And then the sounds and what it felt like to be there for that long. And then taking that off and it was actually, the main part of the experience was after the fact. And those emotions um, of empathy and just really, it's, it's an incredible feeling to get out of a piece of VR and feel that like you were there. So um, I think that's great for students as well to use that, teach that to kids, especially um, to some minorities in Los Angeles where that's, you know, maybe someone in their family or someone has been in that prison situation, that um, understanding those feelings I think is very important, especially, and for gun laws in America, I think it's a very important thing to do is to teach, to see VR and understand what it's like to be in a scenario where there's a gun pointed at you. I think that, that you can't leave a headset and not have a sense of, understanding a little more. Um, that's, it just blows my mind. I'm, I'm from a very small town in Montana, so learning about the world through the VR has just completely opened my mind. Um, uh, news outlets such as New York Times and The Guardian have great apps right now, 360 apps, where you can um, kind of follow journalists' uh, their stories on the ground through your window, you, so you don't need a, even a VR headset. But to me, I understand news more. And I follow, and I seem more um, engaged and understand it a little more now than I ever did reading the newspaper. Uh, also, tomorrow there will be a panel on empathy yep. and teaching empathy, which yeah. um, we'll dive into that quite a bit more. If you're interested in that, I think that's um, yeah, that's tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. I think that's Great. time for us. Can we give our panelists a round of uh, round of applause? Thank you all for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.